This evening's webinar is brought to you by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association's Young Beef Leader Program with the help of the NCBA Producer Education Team. Welcome everyone, my name is Will Mayfield. I'm a cattleman from Pulaski, Tennessee and currently serve as the Region 2 representative for NCBA's Young Beef Leader Advisory Group. NCBA's Young Beef Leader Program is focused on educating, networking, and developing the next generation of beef industry leaders through engagement with NCBA state and breed affiliated organizations and through incorporation into industry meetings and events. I have the privilege of serving alongside seven regional representatives who make up the steering committee. As a participant, your line will be muted, but feel free to submit your questions in the chat box on your screen. And at the end of the presentation, we will do our best to answer everyone's questions. If you have trouble with your technology or if you're joining us only for the audio, the webinar is going to be recorded and will be available in a few days at ncba.org. On behalf of the NCBA, we are pleased to present Making the Most of Industry Events with Tim Hamrick. Tim is an agribusiness recruiter and the host of the Future of Ag Agriculture weekly podcast. He is the founder of aggrad.com, which helps students and young professionals find their place in modern agriculture. Tim spent his first eight years of his career in the feed and grain industry as a merchandiser and manager. He is a former national FFA president and a graduate of the University of California, Davis. He and his family now live in Eagle, Idaho. Tim, I'll hand it over to you. Here he is. Hey, thank you so much, Will, and thank you all for taking your Tuesday night. Uh, to improve yourselves, both personally and professionally. I, I love industry events. There's nothing better when they're good, they're good. And, and we're going to uh, tonight talk about some ways that we can make them, uh, make sure that they're really good for you. Uh, to make sure that you can hear me and everything is going well and that chat box is working, I'd love to have you use it here real quick. In that chat box, if you could just maybe type in uh, the last industry event you went to. It can be the name of the event, the town, uh, anything about it, but just use that chat box. Let's make sure everybody's here and everything's working. So I'll, I'll start. I, I went to the AFA Leaders Conference in Kansas City week before last. Uh, would love to see, love to see some more responses in there. And while you're figuring out that chat box, it should it should be on the bottom right. Would love just to see kind of other places you went, other industry events going on. Um, but I, I love webinars. I, I, I think it is so cool um, that a group of us can all take some time together and spend some time together uh, virtually. I, I just think they're a fantastic way to uh, talk about important concepts, but most importantly, to leave with real actionable items. Uh, so I, I got Josh on here, went to the National Angus Convention in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, would love to see some more responses if you're out there in the chat box there. Let's see here. Oh, I need to switch to, all right, there we go. Cool. Well, uh, tonight we're going to start kind of taking a high level view of, of industry events, but what I really want to get to is, is some very actionable items that you can use uh, to make the most of industry events. So by the time we leave here, uh, you're going to have a checklist you can follow uh, before you go to an industry event to make sure that it is effective for you. Uh, you're going to have some really specific tools and ideas to make sure that you can deepen relationships with people and help you work towards your career goals. Um, and we're going to leave with a plan so that the next time you go to an industry event, uh, you can absolutely make the most of it. So, so let's dive right in. In 2015, I started my recruitment business, and I thought the first thing I should do is attend an industry event. So I found one of the bigger ones I could in, in the IPPE, uh, International uh, Processing and Production Expo in Atlanta. Fantastic expo, really big. I, I bought a plane ticket, I bought my registration, I bought a hotel, uh, I, I showed up and I was just ready to rock, or, or so I thought. <laughs> after, after three days being there, I walked the halls, I picked up some uh, beer koozies and stickers and buttons and tried to strike up a few awkward conversations uh, and really just didn't get very far, didn't get anywhere. And, and it's not IPBE's fault, it's a fantastic expo. In fact, I've been back since and had a wonderful experience. Um, but the, the truth was, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to set myself up for success at industry events. I'm guessing I'm not the only one who's had similar experiences where you're all excited to go someplace, 
uh, but the takeaway just kind of isn't really there. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you're here tonight because uh, while others will be wandering around aimlessly like I was at the next industry event or maybe going back to their room early to catch up on email, you're going to be uh, meeting new people, deepening relationships, and improving yourself professionally because I think we've got some really, really great actionable uh, advice here for you tonight. Essentially, in other words, we're going to help equip you to drink upstream from the herd. Uh, love doing beef events because there's nothing I like more than sharing the cowboy wisdom. And I've got a few of those sort of cowboy wisdom hints to drop uh, for you today. But but uh, if you look at the facts, I, I think you're all here because you want to attend industry events. You see the value. Uh, but there are a couple of facts I'd like to share with you to, to just drive that home in case you're still wondering, why is this so important? Um, as a recruiter, this first one is extremely important to me. 80% of all jobs are obtained through networking. So not through recruiters, not through job boards. They're obtained through your own relationships and your ability uh, to leverage those relationships and build your own network. Also, uh, if you look at ads, so if, if somebody is looking for your product or service, uh, they're, if they see, if 25 of those people looking for your product or service see an ad, one of them might turn into a lead. Whereas if they have a personal recommendation, they're looking for service or product, and they have a personal recommendation to you, uh, for every three people that happens to, two of them will end up following with, up with you as a lead. I mean, whether you are looking to expand your career, your business, just improve yourself professionally, uh, there is no doubt that going to industry events and expanding your, your network is extremely, extremely important. So here, here's how we're gonna do this. Uh, first thing, just briefly we're gonna touch on is, is what should one expect to get out of an industry event? So th this is about making the most of industry events. What should one expect to get? What, what's the goal here? Uh, then we're gonna go into what you need to know before you go, how to set yourself up for success before you even show up at that event. Uh, then we're going to talk about getting what you give. And this is a, a critical piece to this, um, is, is getting what you give. And, and, and I, I can't wait to break that down for you because I think that's going to change the way you look at and approach events. And then the last one, follow up or fail, that more or less speaks for itself. Uh, but, but frankly, if we can't learn to follow up effectively, everything else we do uh, could easily go wasted. If you climb in the saddle, be ready for the the ride. And that's that's really what it's all about here. If you're, if you're gonna show up to an industry event, let's be ready to actually make the most of it. And the first step to that is for you on an individual basis, uh, knowing what success looks like. Essentially, you need to start with why. Now, this isn't me. If you're looking at the screen, uh, you, you probably know. This is uh, Simon Sinek. He wrote a book called Start With Why. Also has a really famous TED Talks, probably, probably one of the most famous TED Talks out there uh, by the same name. And essentially talks about uh, people don't care as much about what you do as, as much as they do why you do it. So if they can understand your why and, and your what makes sense, it is all the more meaningful. And, and where that comes into play here today is if you can know exactly why you want to go to an industry event, so what your goal is, and it's gonna differ for everybody, uh, what your outcome needs to be from this event. If you can know what that looks like, uh, we can start to build on that in, in the tools we're gonna share with you in this webinar. So I, the first thing I encourage you to do is, is just think about what you're hoping to get from an industry event. And, and maybe just write down one thing, the next event you plan to go to, one thing you hope to get for, from the industry event. It, I would love to have you write that down so it's crystal clear to you. Uh, because what you write down is different probably from what I'm gonna write down uh, from what everybody else is going to write down as well. But it's absolutely essential that you know why. Um, I'll just kind of throw out some some maybe generic answers to this question of, of what we should get out of industry events, maybe the why of going. Um, I imagine yours might be a variation of, of one of these listed down here. Uh, maybe, maybe not, it, it doesn't have to be, but but certainly some reasons to go to industry events, meet new people in the industry, reconnect with old friends, uh, professional development, uh, keep track of industry news and innovations, find new customers, strengthen existing relationships, maintain a brand presence, uh, and of course, have, have some fun. So whether that means you wanna end up with a, a, um, a new job, a new uh, promotion within your company, you wanna grow your business to sales, whatever that may mean to you, 
uh, I think it's important to outline that you know crystal clear your why. And make sure you can connect that why to, to a bigger goal, uh, getting that promotion, growing those sales, finding that uh, uh, next person you want to add to your network, maybe hire somebody new, uh, looking for a joint venture or a business partner, uh, promoting your presence in the industry, becoming a leader in the beef industry, whatever that may be. Because if you know your why and you know how it connects to, to the broader picture, uh, we can start to come up with a people strategy. This is a concept shared by Keith Ferrazzi. He's the famous author of Never Eat Alone, um, kind of a thought leader when it comes to the importance of networking and, and building relationships. And this is actually a new way to think about, about goals. I'm sure many of you tuning in here have goals. Uh, you may even know kind of the steps you hope to take to achieve those goals. But most of us don't think about a people strategy. And when I learned this, this kind of totally changed the way I look at, at, at achieving goals. Uh, essentially, what Keith um, is advocating for is finding 10 people, it doesn't have to be 10, but 10 important people, more or less 10, that can help you get to wherever you want to go um, in your goals and then try to deepen those relationships. Now, when I first read this, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It's like, well, that kind of sounds like you're you know, meeting people to, to use them. Uh, but as I thought about it more and as I've, I've kind of expanded my network, I've realized that when someone comes to me and, and, and they can articulate exactly where they're hoping to go and they ask me for help, they think highly enough for me that they think I can help them get there, um, it actually is a very positive thing. I want to help. I'm invested in their success and uh, it deepens the relationship we have together. I think some of us and myself included are a little bit scared to approach people with what we want and ask them if, if you could have their insight or their help or their advice. Uh, but it actually can be quite flattering for the other person um, in order to in order to help. So this may look like a few different things. This could be um, who, who can help you kind of get to that, whatever the next milestone is in your goal. It can be who can teach you what you need to know in order to get to the next step in your career or in your business. Uh, or it can be who can introduce you uh, to the right person. You all have a network right now that that is more powerful than you give yourself credit for. And we're going to we're going to find out a little bit how to tap into that into that network in order to achieve your goals, whether that be a goal at an industry event or just your goals in general. So 10 people, though, per goal, it, it may seem like a, a daunting task. It, it may seem like a lot, uh, but but don't worry about biting off more than you can chew. Your mouth is probably a whole lot bigger than you think. Uh, certainly is is probably true for me. All right, so so that's more of a high level, like you know, where are we going with this? Why should we expand our relationships? Why should we invest in these industry events? I think you're on board with the big picture, but now we're going to drill down into sort of brass tacks of what's that mean? Like you know, what do you do with this knowledge? You know, it's important to build relationships, attend industry events, develop yourself. Um, but what does that mean? And, and I'll pause right here too. If you have a question about anything we're talking about, because we're going to back, we're about to dive into some really practical stuff here. Um, if you have a question about any of it, just leave it in the chat box. We're going to have a Q and A section at the end, um, and Josh is going to going to manage that. We will definitely get to your question, so don't feel like I'm ignoring you here. But feel free to leave those in the chat box, and we will definitely um, get there. But let's step into some really practical tips for how you can make the most of industry events. Uh, it, it, it all hinges on, you know, your people strategy. So, you know, your goals, you know, how it fits into your overall goals. You know who you need on your team uh, to expand those relationships, deepen those relationships and how to get to the next level. So now it's about putting all that to use. Uh, very, very simply put, uh, if you already know them, the thing, the biggest change, the biggest shift for me personally between that IPB I mentioned to actually now making the most of industry events is I go into an industry event with meetings already set. It's not, hey, I'll see you uh, down down there in New Orleans. It's, oh, hey, do you have some time while we're in New Orleans that we could um, grab coffee, that we could have dinner, that we could have lunch? I set those meetings up ahead of time. And if you already know those people, it's super simple. <laughs> you just call them, email them, uh, text them, and set up those meetings, but have them set beforehand. What amazed me when I realized that there's a secret that I just didn't know that everybody else knew was when I first started doing this. The first time I reached out to somebody and emailed said, hey, are you going to be at this industry event? I'd like to meet up for coffee. 
Uh, I was expecting them to say, well, that's weird. Why don't we just meet up since we're both going to be there? Uh, that's an odd thing to say. And, and what I got back was actually, I'm already booked for coffee that morning. Could we maybe do drinks that night? And I'm like, oh, a lot of people are already doing this stuff. And I just had no idea. So if you're wondering, like, is that weird to set up meetings for an industry event? The answer is no, everybody's doing it. So if, if you didn't know about that, there's your first kind of breakthrough for today. Uh, secondly, is if there's people that you've identified really specifically and, and you don't know them yet, um, there are ways you can reach out before the event that's not awkward, that's not weird, that's not like you're stalking them. Uh, there are good ways to do that, and, and we're going we're gonna, to um, talk about some of those. The third thing that's only on here because it is what not to do is say, hey, let's just swing by the booth, or hey, you're going to be exhibiting at the at the show, I'll swing by the booth, or hey, we're going to have a booth at the show, why don't you swing by, uh, because that is a good recipe for never going to happen, because things get busy, and people are doing things, and it just doesn't seem to work out, so that's what not to do, what you want to have is meetings set up, whether that is casual, like, hey, let's go grab a hot dog together, or more formal, you know, like, hey, we're going to have breakfast on Friday at 8 a.m., um, and if you don't know them, there are some tools. We live in 2018. It is a fantastic time to be alive and to be a professional uh, in the ag industry, because you have access to almost anybody you could want to connect with. Almost anybody. I mean, if you tweet at George Strait, he may not tweet you back, but most people are accessible. Uh, they are online and, and you'll be able to find them. And if you can't find them, you can find someone who knows them. And so I don't know anybody is no longer an acceptable excuse to make the most out of industry events. You have access to people you don't know uh, through these social media channels. Uh, you can you can. It, Obviously, everybody's got their own social media of choice. I'm not a big Instagrammer or Pinterest person. Maybe there's ways in those platforms you could do it as well. Uh, Facebook groups. Let's say if you're going to uh, to NCBA in January in New Orleans and you're part of a beef, beef Facebook group. Extremely simple to start a post that says anyone going to New Orleans would love to meet up. People will respond to that and you will start to, even if you didn't know those people, coordinate times that you can meet up. And uh, so the last thing you wanna do is show up there without any connection whatsoever. And I'm gonna show you, if, if you're not a Facebooker, um, I happen to be more into Twitter and, and LinkedIn, as you can see, I'm gonna show you kind of a couple ways you can do this using those two platforms. So I'm gonna uh, minimize my screen here just a minute. Uh, hold on, let's see here. Can I minimize my screen? There we go. I'll minimize my screen and we'll pull up LinkedIn if this works. So on LinkedIn, let's say I am a beef entrepreneur and I would love to meet other beef entrepreneurs or at least meet up with them at the event. So I'm going to go to LinkedIn and up here in this little uh, search box, I guess it, it's probably called uh, beef entrepreneur. There we go. There we go. I'm going to type that in. And so now you're going to get a bunch of results. Here's 1,919 results. That's a lot. How are you ever going to search through those people and see if there's any you need to reach out to individually to see if they're going to be at the event? Well, that's why there's these filters up here at the top. And you can go to connections, people, first connections. Those are the people you're already connected to and start there. Ah, 21 results. That is much more manageable. And now I can go one by one and see, hey, who are these people would be great for me to get to know better. And right here, it, it's like it, it knows what you're looking for. You just push this button and send them a message. Hey, are you going to New Orleans? Would love to meet up, right? And you can start to deepen those relationships and have that set up. This is great for introverts. Uh, I kind of I, it's, I kind of lean a little bit introvert, a little bit extrovert. Um, but this is great for those of us that are like, ah, you know, cold calling somebody or like seeing them there and, and saying, hey, can we go grab coffee? That's awkward. But sending a LinkedIn message, that's easy. That's really easy. So it would be very, very simple to do that. Similarly on Twitter, there, there's a powerful aspect of Twitter that I think a lot of people don't know. So if I'm in Twitter here, I'm gonna go up to this search and I'm just gonna type in beef. Of course, typing in beef uh, is gonna get me a ton of results. That does me no good, but guess what? Uh, the uh, Twitter has the same exact feature that LinkedIn does. Most people don't know this. Right here where it says search filters, I can go, instead of going from anyone that's beef related, I can go to people I follow. Well, here are the beef people that I follow. 
we have already connected for some reason. So we have some sort of background together and I can find out, I can start DMing them if they follow me back or I can just tweet at them if they don't. But these are amazing tools. I mean, these are amazing ways to connect with people. And granted, it's digital connection, but here we are, we're gonna set up an in-person connection to deepen that relationship. Uh, if you're not using these tools and you just discovered this for the first time, I, I hope you're as excited about that uh, as I am, because I think it's just amazing that you have access to these people. And of course, if you don't know them, if you're not connected to them, you can ad just adjust those dials to find the right people. I, I typed in really broad terms, beef and beef entrepreneur. You can get as specific as you want to. You can add your state. Uh, you, you can add you know, uh, maybe some other organization that you both might be a, a part of and dial that in to exactly the type of people that you want in your people strategy, exactly the type of people uh, that you wanna meet up while you're there. But the key is to have those meetings set beforehand. And now when I say have those meetings set, what do I mean? What's a meeting? You know, what is there supposed to be an agenda? Uh, you know, do we have to have a conference room? What exactly are we talking about when we say a meeting? And, and the truth is, it could be a lot of different things. I've listed seven here that, that could be cool. Um, some of these are going to be better for if it's like the first time you've ever met, you know, like coffee or, or, or drinks or, or even a meal is, is pretty simple if you've never met them before. Um, or, or you could just say, hey, I'm going to be going to XYZ uh, City Attraction. You know, if you want to join me, have at it while we're in New Orleans, we might as well see it or while we're wherever we are. Um, other of these might be more for deepening relationships. So if, you've ha if you have a great customer that's going to be there and you want to take them. Uh, to to a show or a sporting event while you're there, or you happen to know that they love fishing and maybe you could carve out enough time to set up a fishing trip uh, before or after the meeting or, or uh, on a day where maybe there's some time blocked off. Um, but these are options. I mean, all of these are, are great ways to sort of think outside of the box. How can you build relationships? You have all these people here that are in your industry. This is where you have chosen to spend your career. What a great opportunity to to build those relationships, whether it's a customer, um, you know, somebody who, who works for uh, a complementary company, some sort of industry partner. Maybe it's just somebody who works for, you know, uh, NCBA, as an example, and, and you want to learn more about what they do. They're probably going to be busier than most. But uh, these are great opportunities to to set something up. Uh, but this will never happen or. It's, it's a long shot, I will say, for it ever to be happening if you just kind of show up there and expect it to happen uh, serendipitously. You're going to be like me going back to your hotel room and, and responding to email because it seems like everybody else has something set up. All right, so here's your checklist. This is the pre-event checklist. If you want to screenshot this, uh, this presentation, as, as Will said earlier, will be available later if you want to come back and look at it. But I want to make this super simple for you. Uh, to, to make sure that the next event you go to is the best one you've ever, you've ever been to in your life, both personally and professionally, and you just enjoy it more. Um, so here, here's the checklist I would encourage you to go through. And I think if you do this, uh, you will be 1000% better than you were if you didn't do this. Identify your goals we've talked about, outline your people strategy, connect to the key people on social media, set up meetings. Uh, review the schedule for the event and, and choose sessions. So make sure that you're not setting up meetings during a session you really want to attend or need to attend. So uh, you definitely want to balance that uh, logistically. Also logistically, uh, obviously you want to make sure you're you're packing accordingly. You're bringing business cards or resumes if you're if you're on the job hunt um, and, and swag to swap. I mean, you don't have to have a booth to to share some some swag with people. And and by swag I mean you know hats, uh, koozies. Uh, people are using those, what are those like pop pop things that go on your on your phone? I'm, I'm not sure what all the latest and greatest of, of swag is, but uh, uh, bring some to to provide as gifts because, you know, everybody likes that stuff, especially hats. Love getting hats. All right. So all of that was that was level one. If you do that, you're going to be a thousand percent better. But that's still level one. I've got some really critical tips where if you want to be an expert at industry events and, and really make the most of them. Uh, this is what I'm going to call level two, which is get what you give. Um, you only get out what you put in. I, I'm guessing pretty much everybody tuning in is going to agree with that. You only get out what you put in. It, as I think back to the events that I have failed miserably on, uh, one thing is definitely in common with them, which is I contributed nothing to the event. Um, I didn't have a booth. 
Uh, I wasn't active. I didn't have a role there. Uh, I didn't have anything set up. I didn't contribute in any way to the event. And you may be thinking, well, you, I mean, isn't there event organizers that, that do all that? I, I'm just there as an attendee. And if you're just there as an attendee and you haven't given yourself a role, uh, that's nobody else's fault. There's ways you can get involved. All right, so I'm gonna admit this quote, which is good judgment comes from experience and a lot of that comes from bad judgment. I, I just kind of like the quote in general, why I wanted to include it. But I do think it's relevant, especially if you're thinking, you know, all of this sounds like a lot. It sounds like a risk to put myself out there. Uh, but you can rest assured that in, in the worst case from this experience, you're gonna end up with good judgment because it you won't be perfect at first probably, uh, but you will learn a lot more by inserting yourself and getting active in the event. I have listed here seven ways that you can bring value to the event. And if you bring value to the event, it will bring value back to you, guaranteed. I mean, it, it's almost a, a law of nature here. Um, now, every event's gonna be slightly different. So I want, I, I want to start with that caveat. Some of these will be better options at some events than others, and there certainly will be some industry events where, where this isn't an option, um, but I'm guessing at least one of these seven will be a good fit for you and a good fit for the event. The first is to volunteer, and um, most events um, ha require quite a bit of manpower to, to operate, to, to host the event. And most events uh, would love to have help from volunteers. And if I can offer one pro tip, there's a volunteer role that you absolutely want if you can get. Um, many events will have VIP hosts, which means it's a volunteer that hosts the VIPs, the speakers, uh, the big sponsors, uh, the special guests. And if you can get on the list to be a VIP host, you can have one-on-one -on -one time with who the event thinks are the most important people there. Uh, that is extremely valuable. And I know people who have leveraged this uh, for all sorts of different ways. Um, and, and the cool thing is, is you are providing a ton of value. Uh, those VIPs expect to have a, a point person. And you are all of a sudden finding yourself from an outsider to an, a very much an insider um, of the event. And obviously that has all sorts of value for, for, for you as well. Next is to host a social activity. I, I've done this the last two years at the FFA convention in Indianapolis. What I noticed was uh, obviously the, the convention is for, um, for young people and there actually is quite a bit there for sponsors. So usually those are executive types or business owners, but there was nothing there for, for young professionals. And there, there were a lot of young professionals showing up. Maybe they were um, in the booths, running the booths at the expo. Uh, maybe they were judging contests. Uh, maybe they were there with their company who's a sponsor. And so I started hosting a young professional meetup at FFA convention. All I did was uh, put something out there that says, hey, we're gonna be doing this. Uh, everybody chipped in for the room and hors d'oeuvres and a couple drinks. And uh, it really didn't take me much time or money, but I found myself being the host of part of the conference, even though I was not putting the conference on. Of course, this you know happened at a separate venue, but it was there walkable from the convention. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. So there are ways you can also host some sort of social activity while you're there, bringing people together and connecting them. Certainly, if, if you have maybe maybe more uh, money resources available than time, you could become a sponsor, which has its own perks and puts you at, at you know on the inside of the event. Um, you can post on social media. Uh, cool thing about social media, as we've talked about in finding people to connect with, is that um, you don't need any special permission to post on social media. Use irrelevant hashtags, provide value, and all of a sudden you've positioned yourself as someone who is kind of in on what's happening at that industry event. And trust me, all of your connections that aren't able to go there will thank you for it because they are receiving some of the value from the event thanks to you and your posting. Introducing others, this is so easy, but so valuable. Start thinking about who uh, might want to be connected with whoever you're hanging out with. So, um, you know, hey, uh, Ryan, I think you need to meet Sandy. And, and I think you all have a lot in common because you're both into beef advocacy. Uh, whatever the case may be, introducing others and they're going to remember the value you brought to their event. And you could be responsible for making that value or that event worthwhile for them. Uh, next one is is producing 
media and and funny story about this that there's a there's an ag expo called the Sun Belt Ag Expo I think it's called um uh down in, in, in I don't remember if it's in Georgia or Florida so forgive me I've actually never been there but we created a, an ag networking calendar for ag grad and as part of that we posted about this Sun Belt Ag Expo and um I guess what happened was uh Google sort of picked up that post and ranked us really high and um the event happened, uh, unfortunately, after the hurricane. So there were a lot of people wondering, like, is the event still going to happen or not? And I started to get all these calls on my phone asking about the Sunbelt Ag Expo. And I could not figure out, like, who had put my phone number in the wrong spot. And the reason was, is they thought AgGrad had something to do with the expo because of this post we had put um, out there. Anyone can do that. There's nothing special about us that we made a post. Uh, but it, I just thought it was really interesting that you can produce media. You don't have to be part of the quote unquote media. You don't need media credentials. Um, you can write posts. You can create videos. You can record live podcasts from uh, fr from the area. Like producing that puts you as part uh, of the event and brings value to the event because it brings exposure. Uh, finally, and this is something that um, you would have to do much earlier than the event because usually the, these slots fill up early, is sign up to uh, present or speak or apply to be a, to be a speaker uh, at that event where you can contribute in that way. I always hear people grumble about the speakers at events, but those same people often don't put their own name in the hat because uh, it, it is rather challenging. But I, I want you to know that that is uh, an option for you. So sign up to, to have your own perspective be heard. All right, this is a comment that I hope uh, you you keep in your mind because this is extremely valuable and something that we often forget, which is the network effect of what you're doing. Uh, this is an important question to ask before you go and while you're there and even after the event is who else should I be sure to speak with while I'm here? Now, of course, if it's after, it's, it's uh, who else should I be sure to speak with about this? Uh, the key here is, and I, I mentioned earlier about when people approach me and say, here's what I want, would you be willing to help me? And I'm always energized, you know, somebody who who is ambitious and has goals and sees me as somebody who can provide help, that, that gets me excited for them and excited to help. Um, but they don't often ask like, hey, who else should I ask? You know what I mean? And I may say, hey, I'm, I'm not the most connected in the beef industry. Um, a great question at that point would be, oh, okay, well, who, who do you know that would be good for me to, to meet or talk to? And, and perhaps could you provide an introduction? Um, I, I am always so impressed, and I notice something about people who get things done, is they always ask, you know, who else should I, should I try to reach out to? Who else would like to hear about this? Or who else should I make sure I see while I'm there? If you use this five times a day while you're at your next industry event, it will pay dividends. This simple question. Because usually what's happening is uh, the person you're talking to is not thinking about connecting you, uh, but they're only not thinking about it because you haven't put them in, in that state of mind. So asking this simple question, who else should I be sure to speak with? All of a sudden that puts me in a position where like, okay, well, I need to think about this. Who, who else should I introduce you to? And, um, and, and that could be you know, very, very valuable to, to your career or business. So I've, I've thrown a lot at you. Uh, I know we've, we've talked about some high level sort of developing relationships and making the most of networking events and that sort of thing. But then we've also talked about some really, really practical tips of how can I on, on level one prepare and then on level two um, add value to an event. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think it, it's important, first of all, take a pause with, with another piece of cowboy wisdom here. If you're riding ahead of the herd, take a look back every now and then and make sure it's still there with you. So I hope, first of all, I hope you all are with me, but, but more importantly, I think this goes to show that you could put all the effort in in the world, but if you don't take a look back, meaning if you don't follow up, you can be doing a lot of effort for nothing. Because all of us, especially if we miss work uh, or we miss our families to go to an industry event, as soon as we get back, we are, we are busy. And it's so easy for weeks or months to go by and, and kind of forget everything that happened there, who we met with, what we talked about, what we were going to do from there. And so really, I, the message needs to be follow up or fail because the fortune is in the follow up. If you really want to get value from industry events and you've set yourself up right, you've added value to the event, the next way that, that things could go wrong is if you don't follow up. So what I would do, 
if you know you're going to an industry event, the first thing I would do after I registered was mark off time immediately following that event for follow-up. Put it on your calendar, dedicate that time because otherwise you will you will lose track. And and then when weeks go by, you're like, oh boy, I don't know if I, I don't know if I should reach back out to that person. It's been a while now. I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't follow up. And that will happen. I'm sure that has happened to you. It's definitely happened to me. Um, so trick there is to put it on your calendar before the event even happens. So what does it look like? You put the you put that invite on your calendar and you know you're supposed to follow up and you sit down to your desk, you're like, okay, this is my follow-up time. Uh, here are here are nine ideas for ways you can follow up with somebody you met or somebody you encountered at an industry event. Um, certainly, there's obvious ones: email, handwritten note. Uh, I love this one because whenever somebody does this, I, I'm always really impressed. They say, "Hey, you mentioned that you would like to do more work in sustainability," and I and I actually came across this really interesting article on sustainability. And here, um, I, I thought I'd share it with you because it's like, wow, they were paying attention and they took the time to help me out without getting anything in return. I love that way of following up. If you can remember something somebody said and follow up with value to add to it. Oh man. I mean, you're, we're, we're friends. We're BFFs. We're, we're friends for life at that point. Um, I just love that. Uh, LinkedIn, you already know I'm a big LinkedIn person. Um, so if, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, but, but if you're connecting on LinkedIn, share a personal in a personalized invite, say, Hey, uh, I heard you on that uh, NCBA webinar and uh, would, would just love to kind of follow up with you about some of the things you talked about. Or, hey, I saw you at XYZ Industry event and would just love to uh, follow up with you and keep in touch. Tag them on social media. I was so happy to, to meet XYZ person uh, tagged on social media. Great to, great to connect. And then what can happen is other people can join in if it's on, especially if it's on Twitter um, or Facebook, like, oh, wow, I, that's so crazy that you two know each other because I know you from this and you from that. And it enhances the overall conversation. If you really feel like going above and beyond is appropriate, uh, certainly a, a, a small gift. Um, it, sometimes this can be funny, like, oh, you know, uh, this funny story happened and it happened because you accidentally uh, pulled a decoration off the wall. So here's that decoration or, or it can be more you know, sincere of, of giving the gift. Phone calls, these things that all of us like are staring at 100% of the time, um, they actually can still be used to make calls, believe it or not. So uh, pick up the phone and give them a call and just say, uh, just want to, you know, don't ask for anything, but just say, I just wanted to say one more time, really enjoyed talking to you. I hope we can keep in touch. Uh, provide an introduction to them. Um, you mentioned that you're trying to grow your business. Here's somebody that has grown a business in that area. I thought you two would benefit from knowing each other. Um, then schedule the next time you might, you might see each other. So, and I'll close with this, we will be known forever by the tracks we leave behind. Uh, back when I went to that first uh, industry event, when I started my business, I guarantee you I left no tracks behind. I got no value out of it. And, and even more importantly, I didn't provide any value to anyone else. Nobody would remember be, being there. I didn't enhance their experience at all. So um, I encourage you, that if you really want the next event to have an impact on you and the people around you, uh, that you try to put some of this stuff into practice and uh, make sure that you uh, leave some tracks behind. And I really, really appreciate you being here. Excited to answer any questions that there might be. Tim, thank you very much for all your very encouraging words. At this time, everyone, please submit any questions you have and while we're waiting on questions, I would like to invite Kristen Torres, Executive Director of Meetings and Events for NCBA, to walk us through the opportunities at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And I just wanted to remind everyone, as your line is muted, please feel free to submit your questions in the chat box on your screen. And at the end of the presentation, we will do our best to answer everyone's questions. If you have any trouble, be, be glad to join us later at ncba.org, as we will have this recorded in a post next week. Thank you very much, Will. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the webinar tonight. Um, as you can imagine, myself and my team are very busy over here getting ready for the convention. Um, we currently have about 3,500 people that are registered already for the convention, and that's about 1,200 people more than we where we were this time last year. So registrations are coming in great. It's a great opportunity 
for you all to attend and really truly make some connections in the industry. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to touch base on before I kind of cover off on the convention is um, addressing some of the questions that came up in Tim's portion of the webinar, one of which was um, how do you connect with other folks at the convention? And we have um, a mobile app. If you haven't downloaded our mobile app yet, I highly recommend that you do that. If you go to the App Store or um, the Google Play, you can download um, the app. The search you need to look for is CIC-NCBA, and that will pull up um, our app for you, and you'll see the Let's Go logo there. Again, that's CIC-NCBA. And then once you have the app, you can log in. Once you've registered for the convention, you'll get a login. Log in to the app, and you'll be able to see everybody else that is logged in and, and planning to attend the convention, and you can actually connect through the app there. Um, so just to cover off a little bit on what we have going on on the convention, um, a brief overview of, for anybody that's not registered just yet. The convention is going to be held at the end of January, beginning of February. The official dates are the 30th through February 1st. The event is actually held at the convention center in downtown New Orleans. And for those of you that are wanting to be a part of the action, our headquarters hotel is the Hilton Riverside. Um, housing and registration are open now, as I mentioned earlier. The headquarters hotel is sold out, but if you're wanting to get into that hotel or any other hotel in our block, please do go on and put yourself on the wait list because we're moving people in and out of there all the time. Um, some of the things that Tim covered off on were um, how to meet up with some folks and um, stopping by their booth being kind of a last resort. Another great way to take advantage of using that mobile app and seeing what's happening in the trade show is you can make some appointments with exhibitors through there as well. So you can just stop by their booth, but do know that there are over 350 exhibiting companies and there are over seven acres of exhibit space. So that's a lot of ground to cover in two and a half days. I highly, highly recommend that you get on the app and start making some connections. Um, for those of you that aren't already familiar with some of the lineup that we have planned for the convention, um, the Cattlemen's College program this year is going to be fantastic. They have over 25 breakout sessions. A session with uh, live cattle will be in our demonstration arena with the one and only Temple Grandin. Um, some of the speakers that we have lined up for you are the legendary Terry Bradshaw. If you want to find out what's happening in the industry and the market forecast, um, Cattle Facts will be presenting as well. And then a gentleman by the name of John Andrasik is going to be our closing general session speaker. He's going to put on a fantastic show. And um, if we have anybody that's an American Ninja Warrior fan, uh, Land Speakers will also be at the convention making a special guest appearance as well. So not only do you need to plan out um, making some connections at the convention, but plan out your schedule. The app also gives you the opportunity to go through and um, highlight which programs you're interested in and really build your own custom schedule. Um, we also like to have a lot of fun at the convention. And the events are fun. They're meant to give you a fantastic experience and a kind of a taste of the city that you're in. But they're also meant to give you an opportunity to network with exhibitors and other producers off of the trade show floor. One of the best opportunities to do that is at the Thursday night event. So this is on January 31st, and it's, we're going to have a Mardi Gras masquerade party. It's open to all attendees. Um, anybody with a full registration or a Thursday full day registration can attend this event. It's included, um, and it's right next to the convention center. And it's a fantastic opportunity. It'll be a lot of fun, and it is a great opportunity to network. Um, and then we close out the convention usually with a big fun event. And if you haven't heard yet, Big and Rich are going to make an appearance at our convention. Um, we have the concert, and then following the concert, we always do an after party, which is another opportunity for you to connect with folks. 
Um, we usually have a dance band and just an opportunity for people to visit and hang out and relax after a long week. Um, I highly recommend, if you haven't done it yet, to please get on and register as soon as possible. All the information on the convention can be found at convention.beefusa.org. All the speakers, the Cattlemen's College sessions, all the trade show exhibitors, you can check out the trade show floor on there and see who's attending the convention. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to plan for the convention. Um, a couple of other things to make note of for you for the convention is um, something new that we're doing this year is we're working with exhibitors to find out which companies are actually going to have some of their recruiters there on site. So if you're looking for a position in the beef industry, we're going to have a section on our mobile app that lists all those companies that have their recruiters there and have open positions. So again, another reason for you to download the app. And another thing that came up in the presentation was um, becoming a speaker at future events. And we actually have implemented a process just this past year where for the Cattlemen's College sessions, we have done an official call for speakers. So you'll see information on that on site in New Orleans for the 2020 convention. We'll be taking applications starting uh, while we're in New Orleans, and those will run through the first part of April. And then you'll have an opportunity to uh, get your ideas, suggestions in front of a committee and possibly become a speaker for Cattlemen's College. So there are a lot of fantastic opportunities for you at the convention, and I highly recommend you take advantage of as many of those as you possibly can. So um, that's it from my end. Happy to take any questions on the convention, any specifics that you want to know on that. Well, thank you very much, Kristen. We look forward to seeing you in New Orleans. Now I'll turn it over to Josh White at NCBA to moderate our question and answer session. Thanks, Will. And um, handling these questions, moderating them since we have presenters in different places of the country at the moment and not everybody can see them coming in. One of the questions early on, Tim, as you were speaking about social media was um, about the use of hashtags. Often events will have hashtags or social media uh, gathering points or rallying points. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that or using those? Yeah, absolutely. I use them in two ways. Number one, make sure you include them as, as much as possible. Uh, but number two, search them. Find out what other people there are talking about. Um, I, I think hashtags are extremely valuable, especially on, uh, I would say, Twitter and Instagram, even, you know, more so than other platforms. But but uh, as you've noticed, Facebook and LinkedIn have sort of ad adopted them too. Uh, but definitely be doing that because that's, that's how other people looking to connect are going to be uh, looking online as well, both as somebody posting and somebody looking, uh, highly recommend. Hi, this is Kristen, I'll just jump in again. Um, I would second what Tim just said about the hashtags and the official hashtag for the cattle industry convention is CattleCon19. CattleCon19 is our official hashtag and I highly recommend you use that and just become a part of the conversation for the event. All right, we have another one that was mentioned, you know, how you could follow up. Tim, you covered quite a few, I think nine different options. Um, the question is, um, you know, I, I was at an event, I wasn't able to follow up immediately, but um, when is it too late to send a thank you note or, or to follow up? Or how can you, how can you uh, figure out a way to jump back into the conversation after it's gone stale? Right, uh, so first of all, it's, it's never too late. Uh, ne never too late. Now, um, don't that doesn't give you license to wait <laughs> next time. Next time around, oh, Tim said it's never too late, so you know I don't need to do it now. But I mean, if you if you've already uh, waited and it's been weeks or months or a long time afterwards, um, own it. Say, look, it's been a long time. You probably don't even remember, but uh, I really have been meaning to follow up with you. Um, now that that could happen in any of those nine ways. It might be weird if you send a gift after months after months of no follow up. But uh, but if you're wondering about someone you met 
you know, years ago, and maybe you, you see them now, and you're like, oh, boy, they probably wouldn't remember that I met them, so now I don't want to approach them because I never followed up, and I'm embarrassed about it. Don't go your whole life without reconnecting with that person. You know, for goodness sakes, reach out and say, look, you didn't remember, you probably don't remember me because I didn't follow up, uh, but I would like to get connected with you. Good deal. Um, another really interesting question came through. It says, I've always gone to industry events with collegiate groups. Now I've graduated, I'm out on my own, and I'm, I'm planning on attending. Do you have any encouragement or tips for those attending solo or for the first time on their own? And I'm going to let Kristen start this one off. Yeah, so one of the things that I highly recommend is um, attending the first timers reception. So um, on the Wednesday of our convention, there's a, we put on a first timers event and you can register as a first timer as you're going through the registration process. There's no additional fees for it. But you'll then receive an invitation to this event and it's a great way to get connected with other first timers um, hear about what's happening at the convention, what are some of the most important things for you to attend, and then we actually break the group into, or break them down by region, and so we have our regional VPs help make connections for folks, for people that are from the southeast, or if you're from out west, and then you have somebody that you know when you're going to some of these receptions. That, I can't emphasize enough how important that is, and honestly, using the app and looking through there and seeing if there are names that you recognize. Maybe some of your old friends are attending, or if you're connected to folks on social media, just reach out and find out if anybody else is going. Um, sometimes you'll be surprised how many people you actually know at an event. Jim, you have anything to add to that? Oh, I thought that was fantastic. I love that there's a first time, you know, an event for first timers. I would just add, you, use it to your advantage. Sometimes what you see as your biggest, uh, you know, disadvantage can actually be your biggest asset if you use it. Meaning, uh, you put out there on, on a, a Facebook group of beef people, hey, I've already, always gone as a collegiate. This is my first time as a professional. Who else is going to be there? And people will instantly be drawn to you because they want to make sure you have a good experience. So uh, don't see that as, as a negative. Use it as a positive. Great advice. Uh, we have another one here. What would be the number one thing to attend at convention? And I'll I'll go ahead and start with an answer since our team leads Cattleman's College. I'll just go ahead and put in a plug that that's where the most learning happens. But seriously, I'll hand it off to, to Kristen to uh, try to address that. Well, I would agree. Cattleman's College is very important. Um, I think it's um, a kind of a personal decision to some extent. If what you're after at the convention. Some people really are focused on attending Cattlemen's College and maybe there's a session or two or a whole track that really speaks to what issues you might be trying to solve on your operation now. Um, if you're wanting to connect with folks, I highly recommend you attend some of the social events. Um, it's just an opportunity to visit with you know, other producers, and if you've never been before, please attend that first-timer event. Um, for some folks, it's a trade show is by far the most important thing because they're looking for the latest and greatest um, tools and services that are out there. Um, it really, truly just depends on what your final goals are for the convention, but I would think absolutely not to miss for sure is the trade show. Anything to add to that? My mind just went to American Ninja Warrior and Big and Rich. I mean, I don't know how you can miss that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to do, but this has all been great advice because you can get overwhelmed uh, when you show up if you don't have a plan. And uh, that scheduling app uh, function in the app is really helpful. There's also a trade show uh, interactive map, I think, still in the app, which you can get lost in the trade show so easily. I would highly recommend using that. I've used that quite a bit to try to connect with people that I'm looking for uh, in the trade show and say, hey, let's both meet up at a certain booth, and uh, then you can pull out the app and find it. And please know that we also have, um, there'll be a whole registration area there that is staffed with folks that can help answer questions. If you're not sure 
what's included with your registration and what's not. We try to make sure if you get a full registration, the education package, you're getting everything from Cattlemen's College to Big and Rich and everything in between. Um, the only couple of things you would add on are like if you want to run in a 5K or something like that. We have an information booth that also folks there can answer any of those questions. And if you're not sure if it's included or if it's open to attendees, um, please come by and ask. What about attending committee meetings and other activities, more business type? Um, is there a way to schedule those as well? Yes, uh -huh. all of those events are in the app as well. And all of our committee meetings are open. So if there's something that you're interested in or you wanna find out what's going on with the industry, um, those are all open. You just can't vote. Uh, only sitting committee members can vote. Um, the other thing, if you want to find out what's happening in D.C., we do um, a D.C. update. It's open to all attendees. If you have a full registration, you can go to that. The thing where um, you want to make sure that you're getting the right type of or registration, excuse me, um, if you get a trade show only, that literally means you can only go to the trade show. No committee meetings, no general sessions, no Cattlemen's College. So make sure you're collecting the right type of registration. Any comment on that uh, question about committee meetings, uh, Tim? Sometimes people are a little fearful of going into those, but those can also be a great way to, in my opinion, to network with folks that are hyper uh, focused on a certain area. If that's if that's an area you're interested in, it's a great way to find like-minded folks. Yeah, I think one critical aspect of going to to an event like that is is understanding what's going on uh, among among you know the leadership of, of the organization and in in the industry. I think those are uh, are critical, and I, I just love. I mean, y'all's app is is amazing. How much you can do, and you can really a lot of the planning we talked about today, you can execute right there on the app, which is so cool. All right, that's all the questions we have. I'm gonna just throw it open for any final comments um, from either one of our presenters. And I've just, uh, if you haven't noticed, forwarded the slide deck onto uh, contact information for both of our presenters, as well as the convention website, again, is up there. So feel free to jot any of that down um, for follow-up questions or anything you need uh, convention-wise you can find there. Kristen, any final comments? Yes. Um if you do have questions about convention, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will personally respond to you and, and try to help you make it the best experience that you can have. Um, and it's, as Josh mentioned, it sometimes can be um, intimidating going into those committee meetings or some of those other meetings, but they really truly are open. And again, if you ever have a question about that, you can ask me, you can stop at registration, you can stop at the information desk, and we're happy to help. Tim, how about you? Parting thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I'll be at convention and, and would love to meet everybody on here. So if you're looking for some low hanging fruit of, of meetings to set up while, while you're there in New Orleans, uh, I would be glad to be your first one. So happy to connect and look forward to seeing you all there. And I don't think we've mentioned that Tim is uh, speaking at Cattlemen's College and also at a Young Beef Leader uh, event during the week. So you'll have two opportunities to hear more uh, specific information to what he's used to talking about most of the time, which is hiring and getting hired. And I think he's moderating a session uh, similar to that about career experience and uh, really happy to have Tim there. And I look forward to seeing everybody uh, there as well, at Cattlemen's College and beyond some of the committee meetings. And with that, I'll hand it back to you, Will, to close things out. Thank you to everyone, and thank you, Tim, and to everyone participating in the webinar tonight. If you're a member of NCBA, thank you for your membership. If you're not a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association today, please visit joinncba.org to join today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.